The wonders of aspirin have been appreciated for nearly 2,500 years since the time of Hippocrates in the 5th century BC, when it was found that chewing on willow bark, which has aspirin-like properties, can actually relieve pain. And Hippocrates uh, prescribed aspirin for that purpose, a pain relief. But the benefits of aspirin for the heart have been recognized only relatively more recently in the past uh, several decades. Although it appeared promising that aspirin could prevent a second heart attack in high-risk individuals with a prior history of heart attack or cardiovascular disease, it wasn't known whether or not aspirin had a role in preventing a first heart attack. In the early 1980s, Dr. Charles Hennekins and other researchers at Brigham and Women's Hospital launched the U.S. Physicians Health Study to answer that very question, whether aspirin could prevent a first heart attack. And among more than 22,000 U.S. male physicians in midlife and older adulthood, low-dose aspirin was tested over a period of five years compared to a placebo pill and a dramatic reduction in risk of first heart attack was found in this randomized trial, a 44% reduction in first heart attack and an 18% reduction in total cardiovascular events, both results strongly statistically significant. So now there was mounting evidence that aspirin had a role in preventing cardiovascular events in both high-risk individuals and in healthy males. However, there weren't yet randomized trials in women. And once again, Brigham and Women's Hospital researchers stepped in and Dr. Julie Burring and other uh, investigators at the Brigham launched the first randomized clinical trial of aspirin in healthy women to see if heart attack and stroke and other cardiovascular events could be prevented by aspirin in women as well. And it was very important that this trial, the Women's Health Study, including more than 39,000 U.S. female health professionals, was conducted because it showed that aspirin had somewhat different effects in women compared to men. Aspirin lowered the risk of stroke in women, but overall, in a study population that was 45 years and older, it had a neutral effect on the risk of a first heart attack. Drilling down a little more deeply into the findings, it became clear that among women who were 65 and older, there was, in fact, a significant reduction in the risk of a first heart attack, as well as a reduction in the risk of stroke and total cardiovascular events. In contrast, for women below the age of 65, there's very little evidence that aspirin had cardiovascular benefits. So the Women's Health Study clarified that aspirin had a more favorable benefit risk profile in women age 65 and older than in women who were in their 40s and 50s. It appeared that by the age of 65, women were having comparable benefits to men in terms of uh, protective effect on the heart from aspirin. And this may relate to the fact that women tend to develop um, heart disease 10 to 15 years later than men. So by the time they reach the age of 65 and older, they were seeing benefits from aspirin in reducing uh, their risk of heart disease, similar to the benefits that were seen among men in their uh, 50s. There's also emerging evidence that aspirin may have a role in preventing different types of cancer, particularly colorectal cancer. And um, much of that research has been done 
in Brigham and Women's Hospital studies, including the Nurses' Health Study, the Health Professionals' Follow-Up Study. Those two uh, studies are observational health tracking studies, looking at people taking aspirin and following them for health outcomes. But also, very recently, findings from the randomized trial Women's Health Study reported that low-dose aspirin taken for 10 years and then with follow-up up to 18 years was associated with a reduced risk of colorectal cancer. And this uh, finding was very recently reported and this is now consistent with many other studies around the country and around the world suggesting that aspirin may have a role in uh, preventing colorectal cancer. Also, there's some evidence that aspirin may have a role in reducing risk of breast cancer or preventing recurrence or death from uh, breast cancer in women with a history of the disease. Um, the evidence is not yet conclusive, but there's some promising emerging evidence on that question. And there's also some exciting uh, research suggesting a possible role of aspirin in lowering risk of age-related macular degeneration, which can be a major cause of blindness. It's certainly not a conclusive finding, but it's promising and it suggests that additional research would be of, of interest. And there has been a suggestion from a few studies that individuals who take aspirin may have a less decline in cognitive function, less memory loss. This is um, a controversial area and the evidence is not yet uh, conclusive, but it's promising enough that additional research on the role of aspirin in preventing cognitive decline and, and memory loss um, would be warranted. We also have to keep in mind that although aspirin has many potential benefits, it also has a downside, as is the case for most medications. It has some risks, including um, gastrointestinal bleeding and other bleeding. Uh, questions have been raised even about an increased risk of hemorrhagic stroke. Because decision-making about use of aspirin long-term and for chronic disease prevention can be very complex. It's important that anyone considering regular aspirin use talk about aspirin with their physician, with their clinician, and make a decision that is individualized and that is personalized to their underlying risk factor status and that makes use of all of these are research studies suggesting who is and who is not an appropriate candidate for regular aspirin use.